Welcome back to Acadian Alive. We have News 10's Gerald Grunig with us. As I told you guys before the break, we'll be sitting down to chat about some, some big news that you recently yeah. got, Gerald. A lot of our viewers know already from last night's newscast here on KLFY, um, a major change that you have recently started to undergo. What do you want our viewers to know as far as uh, what's happening in your life right now? Yeah, so uh, last... 12 hours, 24 hours have been wild, um, you know, in the best way. Receiving tons of uh, amazing support, feedback, outpouring of love has been uh, unbelievable. And honestly, um, I, I, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, so, you know, it's this is a special community that I've decided to, you know, that we've decided, I've decided to work in. My, my wife and I have decided to raise a family in. Uh, you know that. Um, so... Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, I was diagnosed with, diagnosed with it at the end of June, beginning of July. Uh, started going to see oncologists, some virtual appointments in New Orleans, uh, here in Lafayette. Started chemo on Tuesday, July 25th. Um, I'm getting ready to finish my second round. I'm going to do eight total rounds. You know, there's all kinds of medical terms as to, uh, you know, what a round is every 28 days. You know, I, I'm just calling my eight treatments round. So I'm going to do eight rounds of chemo. Um, could be four, depending on how you look at the month. Like I said, depends on who you're talking to. But uh, yeah, I have a really high cure rate, 90 to 95% for young, healthy adults, people in my, my age group and demographic and what's been wild has been I had no signs of anything right mm -hmm. um I did have lumps on my neck but you know no night sweats no rapid uh weight loss no fevers no you know having a hard time healing nothing like mm -hmm. that my blood work looks great still does um and yeah I went to the doctor and then all of a sudden it was ultrasound CT scan ENT appointment biopsy hey you have cancer we're gonna have to start chemo sometime in July so it was, a, it was a busy couple of weeks, um, but what's been the, the toughest part, even in the first week, first couple of weeks post-chemo, have been figuring out my new sense of normal with how I'm feeling versus commitments, work, what I still want to do, what I still can do, what I'm not overdoing it with, if that makes sense. And one of the things that I learned quickly last week was that I need a Katieana to know what's going on with me, so that way when I am seen in public, because I, I got chemo on Tuesday, I was at work Wednesday morning, Thursday, and Friday, trying to get stuff shot, so that way the next couple of weeks as I continue to take more of the chemotherapy, if my body does get run down, I, I want to shoot as much and do as much while I'm feeling my best, so that way w we can continue to be productive and I continue to you know, keep working because that's important to me. So I just really need and wanted Katie Anna to know what's going on with me. So that way, when we are out at an event, when I'm feeling good, maybe I'm not 125, maybe I'm at 80. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I, there, I still feel good, but I just, I just felt like it was important for the community to know that what I was going through, what, um, ex what the expectations are for me, my health. I didn't want things to kind of like, what's wrong with Gerald? Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to happen. So. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a crazy couple of weeks, but um, very, very, very optimistic and excited about my diagnosis, my prognosis, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll be rocking and rolling um, by the end of October, probably November, December. I'll be feeling uh, hopefully back to myself. But, you know, after the first treatment, um, I'm, I'm definitely anxious to do round two because I'm, I'm like, all right, is this how I'm going to feel? Mm -hmm. Let's go, baby. You know what I mean? That's kind of my approach with it.